Welcome everybody to our BCG and Bain first round case interview. We have great plans for today. A lot of things to do with our amazing coaches, Andre Homolenko and Gaurav Posley. We will crack the case. We will discuss um, some insights from BCG and Bain and also answer um, your questions as many as we can. Um, but first of all, could you guys tell me, uh, could you answer my question? Um, what helps you to be productive while solving cases? So I guess that it takes a lot of energy. What helps you to be productive and solve as many cases as you can? You can write to the chat as well. What are your ways, maybe your motivation? I don't know. Any ideas? Nothing. <laughs> Do you guys solve cases? <laughs> okay, flip lounge. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Good, great. Regular practice. Regular practice is always um, a good thing to have, right? Uh, Case buddy, yes, that's a great thing. Yeah, case buddy, always helpful also. So uh, let's see what we have with you today then. Uh, a small agenda. So first of all, I will tell you uh, so format and uh, rules uh, of our webinar. Uh, then I will uh, pass the word uh, to Andre and he will tell uh, you about himself and about our company. Uh, then we will have uh, a window for our clients uh, to talk about their experience, of course. And then we have the major part, which is, of course, uh, case uh, simulation itself with our candidate and our uh, interviewer, Gaurav. And then we also will have a feedback part uh, and a Q&A session. You will be able to ask all of your questions. You also can write them in the chat box uh, during the webinar, so we will collect them and uh, answer as soon as possible. And then in the end, we will have uh, bonus materials. So please stay with us till the very, very end to get all of the goodies, all of the bonuses, all of the nice stuff. Uh, I will also uh, so remind you the rules. They are not very hard, not very difficult. Uh, so each part of our webinar uh, will last for around 15 minutes, except from the uh, so case uh, simulation part, which will last for 50 minutes. And uh, uh, of course, uh, feedback and Q&A session, which will last around uh, 25 minutes. Uh, I will kindly ask you to mute your mics uh, till, the, uh, till the end. And also during the simulation, please turn your cameras of just to create um, more convenient atmosphere for our candidate. Um, so, and once again, uh, the reminder for you to stay with us till the very, very end to get all of the bonus materials, all special offers, and also be able to book your first session with our coaches already today. So uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Polina. I am Deputy Head of Marketing Department at Consulting Masters. Uh, and also let me introduce you our client, our candidate for today, Pritam. Uh, Pritam, how are you today? Uh, are you here? Can you tell us something about yourself, please? Yes, I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> Waiting, I'm mean, super excited for this webinar. And good, uh, yeah, yeah, let's, let's crank the case. Okay, good, great. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. Um, yeah, then actually, let me pass the word uh, to Andre then and give him a floor for his speech for today. 
Thank you very much, Polina. Good, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, uh, or good night, mm, depending morning. on in where in which time zone you are currently located. Very warm welcome to our weekly webinar. And today in the webinar, we're going to simulate the Bain uh, or BCG first interview round, especially for you with our dear guests, uh, especially the Freedom playing the candidate tonight. So Freedom. Are you doing well? Um, for are you ready for your debut on the big stage? Yes, absolutely. A bit nervous, but excited as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think that university uh, truly, uh, yeah, belongs to it. So, um, uh, for those of you who still don't know me, hi, my name is Andre. I'm a professional career coach and mentor, and together with our team of consultant masters, we help students, MBAs, and young professionals like you uh, to get into the leading consulting firms worldwide. And I do this mainly for two main reasons. First of all, I've been a consultant on my own. I started my path back in 2010. I'm born Ukrainian, so I got an internship with Roland Berger in Kiev office. And already in my second project, I mean, I was just, imagine this, I was in just 21 years old and I was able to serve and work for the Russian government to help them uh, to get ready uh, their country for hosting winter Sochi Olympic Games 2014. And it was, it completely blew up my mind. Um, it was uh, such a big project and I couldn't truly really believe that, that I was able to work uh, for, for the minister responsible uh, for such a big event. And four years later, the results of our work were seen by more than 1 billion people across the world. And this, uh, this completely blew up my imagination, what kind of impact you can create in consulting. And of course, it also offered me various opportunities to, to go abroad. Then I was transferred to Germany. And after a couple of years, I also moved to, to the Middle East in Dubai. So I have accomplished more than 30 projects in consulting. I also had a lot of difficult times. I mean, uh, with these up arounds, with these difficult promotions, uh, with a lot of stress and even uh, getting into consulting, 10 years ago or 12 years ago after the last financial crisis was a tough challenge. It is actually comparable to, to what we are experiencing now in the pandemic. So therefore, um, I not only gathered a good experience, but I have a true passion to give something back to people. And that's why I'm, I'm standing here in front of you uh, with our team because we want to, to serve you and to help you to get into consulting, to even get a chance, because 99% of the people will be rejected of the applicants. Uh, so consulting is not for everyone. Less than 1%, actually 0.8% make it to McKinsey offer. And we really want to help you on that way. That's why the entire team of consulting masters is here to serve you and to help you to answer all your questions uh, to get ready for your upcoming consulting career. So please, ladies and gentlemen, use the opportunity, use this chat to ask all your questions, uh, put them right there, and we will be happy to provide you the assistance. And also book a call with one of our client managers. You will get the link right now here to figure out more whether you are a good fit into consulting. We can analyze also your specific situation and we can take this forward to help you to get your uh, to your dream job offer. All right, let's basically move on. So um, I'm really very proud of one accomplishment. So together with Gaurav, uh, another great business uh, expert and career coach here, uh, we combine more than 12 years of experience in consulting, mostly in Europe, um, in Africa, in the Middle East and Asia. But our expertise is really worldwide because we have helped more than 600 people, 600 students, MBAs and young professionals like you sitting here in the room who are already today with our help working 
in consulting uh, from North America, from Canada, US, uh, Latin America, uh, all over the Europe, uh, Africa, Middle East, Southeastern Asia, and even uh, Australia and New Zealand. So we truly have a broad international scope, uh, simply due to the fact that recruiting practices in consulting firms are pretty standardized and very similar all across the world. So we have a global reach and uh, what makes us especially proud is that more than 600 of our mentees are already working in consulting. And apart from them, more than 200 people uh, are nowadays working uh, at MBB firms, so-called McKinsey, BCG, and Bain top tier firms, as well as 400 uh, students or a little bit more are working in other leading consulting firms like Roland Berger, Strategy and Kearney, Oliver Wyman, Big Four, Accenture Strategy, other boutique firms. So I'm pretty sure you name a, a firm and um, I'm pretty sure that uh, one, at least one of our um, alumni is already uh, working in that company. Yeah, and maybe just to give you a couple of uh, recent examples on the next page, um, what we are specifically proud of is that most recently this spring, seven of our um, students have already started working in consulting. Just this March, they entered um, seven positions with these four firms, namely with McKinsey, Bain, Oliver Wyman and Roland Berger in different offices across Europe, Middle East and Asia. And they already today started uh, to um, get high salaries uh, with, uh, uh, with the salary range between 50,000 US dollars up to 150,000 uh, dollars, depending on the position that they received on the firm and of course on the region they are currently working. And what is not even mentioned in this web, uh, in this page um, is actually that we are just very short to announce um, that over the last four weeks, actually five further our students, some of them are even present in this room, have already received uh, uh, about eight offers uh, with the companies like Bain, Roland Berger, um, EY Partenon and others. And we are about to announce this news uh, very soon, officially, after those guys will get the confirmations. We will also give them uh, the chance uh, to, to speak um, about their experiences. So, um, just to recap, you would get the opportunity to, first of all, should you decide to go for consulting, you would become a part of a very dynamic environment where you would be able to solve different types of projects and really master your problem solving skills for different functions, different industries and different locations. Um, secondly, you will also become a part of really learning environment where you will be surrounded by most bright people uh, in the industry. And last but not least, you will, of course, reward it financially. You will gain financial freedom. You will get start earning more money than you can actually spend because you will also not have enough time. But again, this is not for everyone. Consulting is very tough to break into. So doing it on your, on your own, I mean, it could be extremely tough. I can tell you this from my personal experience because once upon a time, I was rejected 39 times before uh, getting accepted uh, to my first offer. So I'm more than happy to share all my uh, learnings from my failures and also from the success stories which we uh, had in our consulting careers with you. So please use the chat and this opportunity to um, ask your questions. And yeah, we are happy to serve you. So I think I have spoken more than enough. So let us 
give me, uh, let's give uh, the chance to our clients who are present in this room uh, to speak about working with us together. So I already see that a couple of you have joined. I already see Fernando, uh, Freedom, uh, Mark, and maybe also anyone else. Uh, so guys, would you like to share a little bit your experience of working with Consulting Masters? How is it going for you? Yeah, Fernando, would you like to start? Maybe you could briefly introduce yourself and uh, tell tell everyone how it goes. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good, great. Well, I'm Fernando, I'm from Argentina. Uh, I have eight years of professional experience divided into supply chain and business development in Latin America. I'm currently in Barcelona, finishing my, my MBA. And as most of you here, I'm also looking forward, looking to get into consulting. And so far, my experience working uh, with consulting masters, I think I discovered many things. The MBA kind of prepared me, but I think that there's uh, special techniques, special trainings that are needed to be successful in, in the interview. And the sessions that we have on, on Mondays about Q&As and on Fridays, uh, I think are super valuable because you can go into the details of specific things that of real things that will happen during the interview. I know this because this happens to me where the, in some interviews and where some parts in which I failed and I see that these are the topics that we actually touch. So I think it's super valuable in that sense. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, anyone else uh, would like to conclude? I'll continue. Yes, hi, Andre. Hi, Mark. I'd like to give my experience. So basically, my name is Mark Tairouz. I'm Lebanese Canadian. So uh, originally, I'm a petroleum engineer, and I worked in uh, UAE for uh, six years. Then I did my MBA. So after, and all, I'm also an entrepreneur. Uh, so after the MBA, I decided to do consulting. So I started by myself, first of all, uh, by doing cases by myself. I learned everything by myself. And I, I did uh, some interviews with some firms, but I was not successful. So I just wanted to discover what were the main problems in my performance. And, uh, and I wanted like a professional to highlight me the main thing that I need to work on. So what happened is I threw Omar. Uh, Amar was already working with the consulting masters. He put me in contact with Andre that uh, introduced me to the program and he told me how he can help. Uh, it was very appealing. So I registered. Uh, I started, I think, around uh, February and it's been like three months. And I can say that I have learned, first of all, a lot. Like uh, the way they do it is basically you will have one on one session, group sessions. Uh, then you have sometimes they will uh, give us some classes uh, where, for example, about the case performance, each section in the case performance, how you should tackle it, also about the fit questions. And uh, before every interview, honestly, like Andre and Gaurav, like they always ask me, what do you need? You need help. How can we help you? And they will dedicate one hour just for that interview, how to, tack how to ace it and... Uh, like they will spend time just to uh, prepare you very well for it. Uh, I do recommend it to everyone. I benefited a lot and I hope soon, I'm still doing some interviews now and I hope soon I'll get a job and quit <laughs> the consulting master. <laughs> no, but honestly, like uh, I would like to thank again and again, Andre and Gaura for all the help that they gave me. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I think uh, once in Consulting Master, you are actually for the lifetime in Consulting Master. So uh, we are happy to help you to get uh, to your job, but there will be definitely also one point about getting a, get great, a, a, getting a great consultant and also become a member of our alumni network. Uh, so... I will I not agree, leave you agree. that easy. <laughs> I, I, I agree. And I know that everyone who will uh, see us and see the group, they will know that 
we became like a family, like uh, me, Pritam, uh, Omar, Ahmad, uh, like the whole group, we became like friends. And yesterday I was meeting one of the other uh, students, like there is a, a feeling of family and like friendliness and like we're all together for the same goal, which makes it very special. Like we all feel together and we're always worried, like how did you do your interview? I hope you did well. So yeah, it, uh, I'm sure it's for life, so yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone else uh, wants to share his experience? Maybe I can add some points uh, after what Fernando and Mark said. To be honest, it's it's more. Um, I will I will I will focus on two main points here. First of all, it's it's not only about getting into the job, but how you do this job. So in order to know that, you need to talk with the professionals. What is the daily routine? How What is the work going on? And that is the main foundation of any kind of a fit part preparation or case preparation. So case simulation is simply the work that you're going to do in a shorter format. And that can you only learn from the experts and I, I especially thank Andre and Gauro. When I started uh, working with them, I also uh, had the similar experience as Mark. I got rejected in some interviews. But when I started working with them, I initially understood what my problems were, where I was lacking. And by point by point, they will explain you what you should do, how you should track your progress. And on that front, you can increase uh, I mean, your capability of solving cases and doing fit part. And second thing, is more about a networking benefit of being in this community. And why do I say this? It's because it's, it's we all are in the same boat and we are all sharing the same uh, problem. So it is, uh, it's, it's very nice to prepare with uh, the people who are already in the same boat and gain, gain their uh, perspectives working with them. And additionally, it also helps you to increase your network. So basically, for example, if you want to apply in different companies, if somebody has already had an interview in this company, then you get some new insights. And you have these friends, uh, as, as Mark mentioned, at, at your disposal, you know, just a WhatsApp, you message, hey man, do you know what, what Bain asks in the second round? And that is the advantage of, another advantage of this firm. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, this uh, these are the two main advantages, I would say, of consulting masters. Thank you very much, Freedom. I also see that there is uh, there are uh, Ashwarya and uh, Pedro here. Uh, you maybe turn on your cameras uh, and also speak about your experience. Um, yeah. Um, so um, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so you know, I am comparatively new to the uh, consulting masters group. But already in my journey so far, I have seen a huge transformation in myself. Uh, you know, from the way I think, from the way I structure, everything is so concrete uh, and on the table for me, you know. Uh, so, so the practice, uh, practice aspect is wonderful here. The coaching aspect is wonderful here. Also, like um, uh, Pritam and uh, Mark mentioned it's like a family so you know since I'm new I'm reaching out to everybody and everybody's teaching me networking how to structure cases you know things that people have actually experienced firsthand uh, while giving an interview so so that's just something that I have found very unique and very helpful. Thank you very much Ashwarya. Uh, Pedro what about you can you maybe turn on your camera and uh, briefly introduce and Speak about your experience. All right. Seems like uh, Pedro probably has uh, some connection issues. All right. Uh, anyway, guys, if you would like to join um, our VIP community member and become one uh, one of the uh, leaks uh, and uh, get the help in order to become uh, the 0.8% <laughs> and leave the 99% behind you and become 0.8% of those who actually get the offers from the leading consulting firms. Feel free to join us 
And uh, yeah, just book a call with uh, our client manager in the link, which you see in the chat. And then uh, let's, uh, let's take it forward. Otherwise, I would then uh, move on uh, with our key part of the webinar. So, um, and pass the word to uh, Mr. Dr. Professor uh, Redhammer Gaurav Bosle. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, um, thanks everyone. Uh, I just uh, I just heard uh, some different uh, different name since last week. I don't know. On the group, everybody has started calling me Master Shifu. <clears throat> but it's, uh, I, I'm taking it as a compliment. <clears throat> Great. So, uh, uh, this is Gaurav. I'm, I'm, I'm dialing in from Mumbai, India. I'm born and brought up in, in India. Uh, I, I have a technology background, a couple of startups uh, uh, successfully sold, etc. And did my MBA from HEC in Paris and then joined McKinsey <clears throat> in Frankfurt. Um, uh, my connection with uh, BCG uh, also actually starts here because this is where I rejected BCG uh, because I also had BCG offer and few others uh, at this point of time. Uh, so I ended up joining McKinsey uh, six years in strategy consulting after that and uh, now seven years in uh, career transition coaching with all the numbers that you see. Uh, this is my passion. I love coaching. I love uh, uh, see, when I um, I got the McKinsey offer, I was uh, you know kind of uh, over the moon, uh, coming uh, coming from India and uh, pre MBA salary of uh, probably two thousand euros maximum, and then McKinsey offering me hundred thousand euros, which is fifty times jump. Um, that was one plus uh, you know all the other perks that that came with it. Um, it was just overwhelming. Right. Uh, I, I did my best to, you know, kind of live up to that, uh, being a good consultant. And I love to uh, love to see that feeling in everybody's eyes. Uh, yeah. And uh, till now, I've seen 500 of those, probably more, more than that. And would love to see uh, this feeling in uh, every one of your eyes. Yeah. Um, so I'm working towards that. And uh, I, I highly encourage all of you to... Uh, enjoy this session and also uh, work honestly towards uh, your consulting dreams. And guys, don't just prepare to crack cases. Yeah, that is probably a very bad way of approaching it. I don't know. I mean, some of the people have also named their website "Crack the Case." It's so crazy, man. Uh, it's it's not about cracking cases. You just you just crack the case. You will you will be cracked in the first year of consulting. Yeah, you work towards becoming a good consultant. Yeah, you work on your problem solving skills. You work on your structured thinking. You work on your top down communication. You strengthen the pillars of success. Yeah, so that you just don't, uh, you know, kind of end up getting uh, in the firm and out of the firm. As you guys know, I think the average tenure in McKinsey is 18 months. <clears throat> yeah, the, the firm that uh, follows up or out very, very ruthlessly. Yeah, so you can imagine how fast you can. Uh, probably the number of months that you will spend in preparing that many number of months you won't even be able to get into or remain in consulting. So uh, work towards uh, you know becoming a good consultant. Um, have a solid preparation. Be honest uh, with yourself, and uh, I'm sure the success is not very far. Great. So uh, uh, too much of probably monologue. Uh, uh, and consulting being collaborative problem solving. I always like to have a collaborative field. And I think uh, Pritam is there uh, as my partner in, in the simulation today. So let's probably begin. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> okay, great. So uh, let's simulate Pritam as if you are in the first round of uh, BCG. Hmm? Uh, and uh, Given that your focus is on Dutch market, let's let's simulate uh, this being a, a Dutch uh, Dutch or UK BCG. Both of them are being your focus markets. Okay, 
<coughs> let's let's take you. Karev, I already see that you're sweating. Uh, it's not a good uh, sign for you. I mean, the interview <laughs> haven't actually even begun yet. Uh, so, guys, would you like to see uh, Pridam playing a candidate and Gaurav pl uh, playing an interviewer? Can you maybe write down into the chat? Are you ready for the simulation? Hey, and guys, would you, uh, I mean, it's just a debut uh, uh, for uh, Pridam. I think it's his first night, uh, so to say. Pridam, are you nervous? Uh, I, I was sort of, but uh, with the introduction and discussion, I am, I am cooled off now. That's very good. And even if you were, you were not nervous, you were excited. Exactly. This is the right way how to phrase it. So, all right, guys, ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you for a minute uh, of your time to turn on uh, all your cameras and uh, wish Freedom best of luck and uh, give him an applause. Guys, come on, come on. Luck, Freedom Luke and Luke. Gaurav really needs uh, your support. Good luck. Good luck, luck. Good luck Freedom. Thank you so much, guys. Thank the you so much. Freedom. All the best, Freedom. Thank Don't so be much. scared of Gaurav. <laughs> <laughs> Master Shifu, you mean? <laughs> Ma Master Shifu is fighting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool. So, uh, good luck. And now, please uh, turn on turn off your cameras and microphones. And uh, yeah, uh, just be active in the chat. We will answer your questions afterwards. Okay. So, Pritam, uh, welcome to BCG UK. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. How are you doing, everyone? Good, good. Very nice. <clears throat> I have your CV in front of me, uh, but I would like to first uh, ask you, why do you think we should hire you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, you should hire me for three main reasons. First of all, my diverse industry experience uh, working in different countries and working in client-centric roles. Second is my problem-solving uh, skills. And third is uh, com combination of both these experiences more about the leadership skills that I have gained. So first I'm I will explain about what do I, what do I mean by diverse industry experience. So along the way of six years of my experience, I got a chance to work as an external consultant and product manager for six years in three different countries and three different industries, such as logistic industry, tech industry, and automobile. And uh, during my work at, at the SOS system when I was working in tech and automobile, um, I got a chance to work with B2B business model. So where I was working towards the, the expectations of the clients in automobile and aerospace industry. So it was more on a technical side of a role. And along the way of my MBA, I got a chance to work, uh, do some internships and apprenticeships uh, about strategy consulting. And there I gained some problem solving skills working on B2C uh, problem uh, solution providing. So mm -hmm. overall, I, with this client facing roles, I have um, gained, I, I can say I have gained uh, effective communication skill and uh, critical reasoning at the same time. However, with this experience, I have gener generated second uh, skill, which I was saying it's about problem solving. So with this diverse experience, I, I, I actually tackled uh, lots of critical problems in different industries. And there, with the help of my superiors, I have developed an attitude to solve any problem and divide it into small steps. However, it is very important to have the steps mutually exclusive. So I am still learning more on it, but basically problem solving with this experience also, I can utilize uh, uh, moving ahead in my career. And finally, com combination of these two uh, assets helped me to develop the leadership skills. So during my time at the SOS system, I, I actually got a chance to work on multiple flagship patented projects of, of the software. And uh, I, I actually received an award of best leader for the most innovative project of the year as well. And there I understood how to work with different key stakeholders and how to manage small teams of the technical people. <clears throat> so I would like to utilize these three skills in, in moving ahead into the strategy consulting environment at PCG. Hmm. The second skill you got through your internship, right? 
it's basically combination of uh, my previous work experiences my educational okay. background and uh, uh, and my internships work okay hmm okay interesting <clears throat> why bcg uh, specifically i applied for bcg because of two main reasons first of all uh, the project portfolios and competitive advantage bcg has within the consulting industry and second is more about the working culture at bcg so uh, for the first point when i was uh, reading the recent um, case study published by bcg how they help ups to develop a, a, a shipper platform or digitalized platform for the effective mm-hmm. servicing of the in the logistic industry and and basically mm-hmm. in in europe overall uh, i came across with their business model innovation model and i saw that the model specifically targets key aspects in the value chain and how they can improvise and digitalize that so i would basically would like to use my industry experience in tech industry and work towards this more model and i understand the pos- the possibility or horizons that this business model innovation idea can use in different industries mm-hmm. and at the same time when i would uh, ch- uh, when i uh, i mean i had a privilege to uh, have a one hour coffee chat session with mr saurabh gupta who is current senior consultant at bcg amsterdam he he was uh, he was telling me about the working culture at bcg how what are the growth opportunities basically for a for a consultant or mba grant and there he mentioned that with your industry experience you can basically jump into the the different types of spaces or the relative uh, industry related work after few years and at the same time working with uh, top mba grads and intellectuals you can you can uh, you can definitely improve on your problem solving skills and which is the most important thing that motivates me to apply at bcg okay you talk a lot about problem solving skills uh, uh, can you tell me an instance where you have solved a really critical problem uh, yes uh, i would like to share an incident where in the, my recent work at reverse logistic group i have developed a market entry strategy for the client in united states would that be fine for you sure please okay <clears throat> so in that sense uh, the basically the situation at hand was the reverse logistic group uh, they wanted to expand their deposit repository system solution in united states so let me explain you what is deposit repository system it's it's about uh recycling or disposable disposing of the water bottles plastic pet or aluminum cans which germany has already implemented and europe is already uh, having that in so there are machines that you have in supermarkets and you just mm-hmm. dispose it and you get the clearing as well so similar kind of strategy they want to use and enter into united states market but the situation was united states it's still uh, there there are some legal aspects still going on state wise so i i had to uh, explore what is the market potential in this case and how we can enter into this market so what was the impact of what you did so basically what i did is i did overall market sizing and how go to market strategy so i basically worked with the team uh, uh, to no, but uh, what's the intended impact yeah If so basically strategy what, goes through then what will happen overall the 500 million dollars market can be captured by rivers logistic group with the help of red bull within united states within four states hmm okay so that That's that, quite that was going to be the, mm-hmm. yeah that was going to be the impact okay <clears throat> good please so, continue exactly okay so the task at hand was to develop a market entry strategy based on the effectiveness mm-hmm. of the market and financial attractiveness as well so what mm-hmm. i did is i and initially why i mean this problem is complex problem because i do not have any information or data at hand so how mm-hmm. i structured the market sizing is basically started looking at what is the average consumption of population in in uh, four states of united states and accordingly i calculated uh, i mean i worked on different types of disposable bottles or cans so pet and aluminum what is going to be the total weight of this disposable cans and after when i got this total number of disposable tons or uh, or the mass of the disposable material i also had mm-hmm. to do the market sizing for the collection network so how we can collect it from consumer home so basically as we have a solution here in germany there mm-hmm. are disposable machines in in supermarkets or hypermarkets 
so also i had to do the market sizing of supermarkets hypermarkets and shop on go so where they can dispose this okay so initially i also looked more into i, I did market research on the different states and i got the total number of markets and uh, how okay. much investment we require for one machine in one supermarket and how much would be the tonnage collected but then when i had the entire market attractiveness the second part was how what would be the financial attractiveness so i developed a revenue strategy mm-hmm. for the clearing as a our rlg group as a clearing mm-hmm. unit and then okay. finally i, I understood to- so basically you are saying the sizing part was the complex part huh? because there was no data uh, available yes exactly and the second part was also about how we can and which which company to partner with so more on the stakeholder levels in the discussion okay. on uh, let's let's say we we want to have a pilot with you so so what are the basis on us. which you propose to select a partner so basically i uh, the first basis was the put to market volume and the second basis was their current uh, uh, i mean current cost savings what would be the cost savings if they use this approach so on the put to market okay. volume who is the bigger player is i mean there are so many bigger players in, in food and beverage industry however we we already had a strategic partnership with red bull in germany so that we wanted to expand and uh, secondly more most on the cost saving part so there is also another thing called extended producer responsibility and recycling cost so that would they they will um, they will they will not pay this fees if they have this kind of solution kind of a circular economy solution okay okay and what was the learning out of this project i mean uh, there are three key learnings i would say is first mm-hmm. uh, first about uh, with the with the least least amount of data at disposal how can you uh, how can you develop data driven strategies second is more about working to with the with the with the c suit people uh, within the organization and third is more about understanding the sustainability angle so on the first side as i mentioned it's it's more about uh, with the data how we can uh, pivot on some assumptions and work towards the solution second is more i i i had a huge great opportunity to work with the ceos within our organization and also the head of supply chain and operations in at red bull okay so basically that was a very value added advantage for me Hmm. and then finally the thing that i mentioned is also more about uh, i mean when i got a chance to work in this uh, uh, organization it was it was more about how i can learn more many things as well moving ahead okay so this experience and then you spoke to a senior consultant with the bcg um, so what's your perception what how is it different how is bcg going to be different for you mm, yeah uh, there could be uh, there could be one major aspect is because i i don't uh, have a much experience de- uh, on on strategy part so basically most of my consulting was more in the operations part so i would like to utilize that experience and work more but what you just explained part. was strategy only right yeah but it, it was strategy. more about yeah exactly <clears throat> but it was more on the operations or more on the uh, sustainability angles more, i mean i there was a financial lens as well but i believe the product portfolios uh, i mean the project portfolios that bcg has are are wide wider i mean not only in the logistic industry or so mm. so the facing my facing with different types of industries would be going to challenge it would be going to be challenging for me okay and why do you want to face different industries why don't you now logistics seem to be your forte so why don't mm-hmm. you continue with uh, logistics yeah exactly so this is uh, basically uh, for two main reasons i would say that is basically for my own uh, learning curve and second mm-hmm. is is also about uh, i mean understanding or improvising the problem solving skills so basically first of all i i personally want to have a multiple industry experience so that i mm-hmm. uh, after few years i can utilize that experience and work towards uh, some other goals so let's say mm-hmm. not only working in logistic but also Uh, e-commerce and and uh, digital or telecom uh, okay. so that i can also gain this experience of multiple industries so you want to diversify your knowledge basically yes absolutely yeah okay to be honest i was being more on the technical uh, uh, expert for 5 years of my life 
but now i move, want to move more into the business side of all the business all the types of industries i recently started with logistics but i would like to diversify on the business topic <coughs> hmm fair enough good so uh, should we head to a case yes absolutely okay mm -hmm. here is the case <clears throat> i'll read out for you our client is a laboratory that provides a diabetes testing services to hospitals in uk however mm -hmm. they have now developed a self diagnosis meter that patients can use to do testing on their own they have hired us to determine if they should take this product to the market okay perfect thank you very much uh, gaurav for this interesting case if i have understood the prompt correctly our client is is basically a lab in uk and they have developed a self diagnostic diabetes kit yeah. yeah and they want to know if they should start selling this in the market perfect yes but in order to understand the problem better and structureize my thoughts i would like to ask some clarification questions so uh, would you mind if i ask some of the questions here sure please okay uh, first of all i i understand this is more into uh, uh, the pharmaceutical thing so how i mean i just want to know more about the product how is this uh, i mean is it approved product by fda or, it's or approved. the mm -hmm. it's uh, it's approved approval is not a problem and second is more about if we want to put it in the market how are we going to put it basically uh, with prescription or over the cell counter no it's going to be prescription i mean you can't just mm -hmm. uh, with doctor's prescription only people will be able to buy these kits yeah okay because why i asked is there are some a good question already. i understand yeah. very nice mm -hmm. okay no problem and uh, my third uh, question is more about uh, the business model of our client so do they have any uh, experience already in the industry uh, do they have any other uh, uh, solutions for the diabetes uh, no diagnosis so they are mm -hmm. no they are currently providing these services of course mm -hmm. there are some other services as well which are not related to diabetes but in the domain of diabetes you currently consider that uh, basically they provide the diabetes testing services to hospital perfect okay and my last could if there are any key success criteria that we should uh, understand in moving ahead in the case any any yeah. Uh, timely uh, yeah mm -hmm. yeah they basically they are looking for a break even in 2 years okay yeah okay perfect mm -hmm. okay cool i i just have one small doubt in this case uh, sure if they want to put it in the market do they are they are they willing to own the entire value chain or are they uh, are also ready for some of the third party services in this case what do you mean by third party service so basically uh, for example uh, uh, they are they only going to do the manufacturing and then other parts like shipping or distribution could be done by different types of stakeholders or uh, we don't have any data on that currently. okay cool mm -hmm. perfect i think i have enough information to structureize my thoughts could you just give me a moment to put it in the framework yes please do that thank you very much for your patience so basically uh, in order to advise our client should they start uh, should they sell this product in the market i would like to tackle this problem into three different buckets first of all looking at the market attractiveness uh, second looking into the financial attractiveness and third looking into the feasibility bucket so in the market attractiveness i would specifically look at the size of the market and the growth in the market so basically what uh, what are the total how many total number of patients we have and uh, what could be the penetration rate in the market and how many patients can we acquire with this self diagnostic meter then moving on to the second part is also looking at the competition or let's say substitutes in this case do we have any other competition in in terms of some drugs or or pills or maybe some other kits which are in the market uh, so looking more into the competitive landscape 
third is i will also look at the customer needs and their adoption to this self diagnostic kit so i believe if they are older patients then self diagnostic meter how how friendly it is for them and understand the penetration as well on the market side once i understand the market attractiveness i will basically look at the financial attractiveness in that i simply would look at the profitability and uh, payback period looking into the revenues and costs and in the cost i will basically look at the initial investment and uh, the operational expenses which are fixed yeah. cost and variable cost of this uh, diagnostic kit, diagnostic meter and finally in the feasibility part i would like to look at the operational capability of our client as well so if we are able if we have this much market share in the market do we have sp specific operational capability in terms of workforce or uh, r and d uh, research and development in the laboratory unless you suggest me otherwise i would like to start with the market attractiveness sure what what do you want to do in market attractiveness absolutely uh, so uh, for this case i mean i first like i would first like to understand how many um, what is the overall market of the of this uh, self diagnostic meter in terms of uh, maybe in terms of uh, monetary aspects or number of meters volume by that way i would first like to know how many patients that we have uh, and and uh, in what kind of geography we are looking into and then what yeah. would be the penetration rate so i have some data points i'll i'll give you those data points okay. mm -hmm. you can consider uk's population to be 60 million okay, okay. and uh, we typically divide <clears throat> this into below 40 and above 40 yeah mm -hmm. and um, so above 40 is around 65% of the population below 40 is 35 mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah uh, and <clears throat> the possibility of diabetes uh, uh, below 40 is around 1% mm -hmm. and uh, above 40 is around 4% mhm mm okay yeah. Perfect. If I uh, can, I just recap. If I have the correct information at hand, mm -hmm. so the overall population of uh, UK is sixty million, and we have two different segments of below forty and uh, above forty. Below forty, mm -hmm. we have thirty-five percent of the population, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, above forty, we have sixty-five percent of the population. Diabetes mm -hmm. can happen to one percent of people who are below forty. Mm -hmm. And four percent of people have diabetes who are above forty. Yeah. Okay. Uh, however, I have a couple of questions to clarify in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, so, okay, the first thing I would like to know how many uh, diagnostic meters are required for each person, and then second, I would like to also ask is how how uh, you would like me to calculate the market size in the monetary side or number volume side. That you take a call. So diagnostic, oh, sorry, the diabetes meter. It's a new new product, yeah, mm -hmm. in the market. Assume that there is no diagnostic meter like that, or diabetes okay. meter like that. Uh, so we don't know about from that perspective. We'll have to explore. At mm -hmm. this point of time, uh, from the hospital testing perspective, typically what we are talking about is people testing the diabetes once in the hospital. Mm -hmm. During whatever the annual check. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, then perfect. I would first then calculate the total volume of the meters uh, uh, required in one year. And then maybe if we can look at some pricing uh, strategies or if we have any insights on that, we can calculate the overall market in the monetary okay. side as well. Okay, so in that case, I would first calculate the total number of patients, uh, basically multiplying 60 million uh, by 35% and taking the 1% out of it uh, for below 40 and doing the similar step for above 40, uh, multiplying by 65% and then multiplying by 4%. Okay, so let, let me start with uh, total number of patients below 40 is uh, 60 million into 35% into uh, one person it's basically um, in this case would be three by five so seven so it is more um, 21 so, so the overall patients that i have below 40 are 210 000. 
okay and uh, above 40 i would do the similar thing so 60 million into 65 percent and two four percent so that is again 60 um, be three by five 13 and basically are you stuck so somewhere in total basically i have a, a total 1.56 million uh, patients who are above 40. I simply multiplied 60 million by 65% and then 4% out of it. Okay. Then? Can I assume 1.5 million? Uh, in you this can case? assume 1.5, yes. Okay. So basically, uh, now I have uh, 210 plus uh, 210 plus 1.5 million. But basically, I would like to understand uh, how many people would use uh, uh, the, the meter. So what would be the penetration of this? Uh, are we going to assume that 100% of people will use it? Or uh... Okay. So how would you go about it? How would you analyze this problem? Okay. Could, how would you estimate? Would you, give... hmm. mm -hmm. would you just give me a moment to think about sure. it? Yeah. Sure, please. Okay, so uh, uh, what I think here in this case is basically, um, I would like to look from the disease perspective and looking more into how many percentage of people are at low diabetes level, medium diabetes level and critical diabetes level. And then I would think that- Very good point. What kind, what kind, uh, what kind of penetration that we will have by different types of criticality so basically, maybe the people who are at low risk, they will not even do the, the, the diagnostic, not 100% of them, but those who are at medium stage, they would like to know what is my, my criticality of the case. And also then more looking into the hospital side. So mm -hmm. on for which kind of customers the doctors will use. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So do we have any information on that side? No. Uh... So the criticality of the disease or how many the criticality of the disease is one factor mm -hmm. um, i was also looking for any, any other factor that you want to uh bake in over here i um, i was waiting for one more factor which would have okay. made uh, the analysis a little bit more robust okay could you just give me one more moment again sure okay so uh there are two there are two small buckets that i have here in this case is is first of all is about the accessibility and second is affordability so in the accessibility case i would like to know that how many people have access to the hospitals and then how many can be diagnosed at the hospital looking at the accessibility side for the, for the patients and second is also on the affordability side as we don't have any information on pricing but if we if we know if we can um, if we have some idea about what is going to be the average price in the market, we can also look at the portability and then we can look for the penetration, right? Mm -hmm. So I think uh, accessibility uh, is not, shouldn't be taken from that perspective. We have a point which is mm -hmm. similar, but it's not about uh, access to hospital, okay? So okay. I'll take your first points, so be it type one, type two diabetes or criticality of diabetes, you whatever you call it. So mm -hmm. from a criticality of a diabetes perspective, yeah, uh, we have a filter which says that uh, uh, among the people who are uh, less than 40 uh, year old, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. um, the likelihood <coughs> of using the meter is negligible. Mm -hmm. uh, because the criticality of disease, uh, very few people would have it critical. Let's yeah. concentrate only on greater than 40. Under mm -hmm. greater than 40, 30% <clears throat> people will have uh, a criticality of diabetes, which will require them to, you know, probably have another check in an year. Okay. Secondly, out of that, 70% are those who will not prefer to the, go to the hospital because of the movement. Uh, probably mm -hmm. they'll not be able to go towards the hospital. They'll find it convenient doing it at home. Yeah. So 70% will find it uh, convenient to use it. Yeah. And out of that 
will find it affordable to use it. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. If I have understood the information correctly, I just wanted to recap. Uh, so overall, the people who are from uh, uh, less than 40 uh, years old, they will not, uh, they don't have, they, they have negligible chance of diabetes. So basically, they will not use it. I mean, let's uh, deprioritize it, basically. Okay, cool. And yeah. those who are more than 40, out of that 30% uh, would like to diagnose the diabetes. Out of that 70% would like to use it, the self-diagnosing kit. And out of that 80% would afford it. Yeah. Right. So what I would do here is I will calculate the total number of uh, uh, total serviceable market. To be honest, like calculating the total number of patients. So yeah. as I already got 1.5 million, I will multiply it with 30 percent. Then I will multiply mm -hmm. again with 70 percent, and similarly I will multiply that with 80 percent. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that gives me around. Um, That gives me around 4.5 is uh, so 18 and into 7 divided by 100. So that gives me around. So it is, uh, it comes around. Um, yeah, it, it comes around 1.26 million. Uh, okay, just could you give me a moment to re no, no, no. Uh, redo my calculation? It's not possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. your, your number is not correct. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just redoing my math in a, a quick moment. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, I get overall uh, 25,200 patients in this case. How much? 25,200. Can you check the number again? Okay. Yeah, so basically, what I'm doing is uh, 1.5 million. Uh, so basically, 30% of 1.5 would be uh, simply... Um, 450,000, right? Yeah, 450,000 and 450,000 into 70% would again be around uh, uh, 45,000 into 7. That gives me so 315,000. Mm -hmm. And again, out of that, I have 80%, so which is uh, 4 by 5. So I'll simply multiply it by 4 by 5. That gives me six sixty three thousand and two four so that gives me around yeah sorry two fifty two thousand total <laughs> right so just now, let's let's take this case. Yeah. yeah that can be very expensive that zero yeah absolutely i agree zeros tend to be very expensive in consulting <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so it's mm -hmm. let's consider two fifty thousand <clears throat> okay Perfect. so um, I'll give you a little bit of uh, quick data and tell me how it is shaping up now. So mm -hmm. uh, the the meter can be sold at around 25 pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all the costs which are related to the meter, the variable costs are estimated to be 20 pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the upfront investment is likely to be around 1 million. 1 million. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. So, mm -hmm. what do you think? Uh, do you think they'll be able to break even in two years? Yeah, sure. I just want to ask one more question. Do we have any fixed cost in this case or 20 pounds includes all the cost? All the cost. Uh, fixed cost means upfront investment we have, which you can consider as fixed if you want to, which is 1 mm -hmm. million. Okay, perfect. Uh, then how, what I will do here is I'll calculate the total annual profit in this case. And once mm -hmm. I calculate the total annual profit, I'll divide it uh, with the initial investment to get the payback period. Yes. So simply what I'll do is uh, uh, is a contribution margin I'll calculate, which is 25 mm -hmm. pound minus 5 pounds, which is 5 pound per, uh, per meter. And we have 250,000 uh, total number of meters. 
I'll simply multiply it with the five pounds, which mm -hmm. gives me uh, uh, 1.25 million pounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I divided uh, 1.25 million with 1 million. It's simply, I absolutely believe that we will uh, break even in one year itself. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, <clears throat> any other consideration that you would like yeah. the uh, client to have before you want to give this recommendation to the client? Absolutely, yeah. I uh, as my third bucket uh, states about the feasibility. I would like to know more about what is the operations capacity cap capability of. Let's say client. we can do that. That is no okay. problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I, I also want to understand more on the product side. How effective it is going to be? What are the repercussions of that? Is not a problem. Mm -hmm. Anything okay. else you have? Okay, could you just give me a moment to think about this? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, one part that I can think of here is basically uh, after how many years this this device needs to be replaced. So if in one year only we are going to have 1.25 million, the next year if we have any growth in the patients, but they might use the same meter. That's okay. So we also, That's fine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no problem. Why don't you take a minute mm -hmm. and come back with a conclusion or recommendation? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, so in this case, in order to advise our client on should they enter with this new product of uh, self-diagnostic meter, I would like to recommend our client, yes, they should for two main reasons. First of all, they will acquire two, 250,000 uh, patients that will use their device, which will give them 1.25 million in profits annually. And that will, uh, uh, second point is about the payback period so that they, they can get their investment return within one year of time of 1 million. However, they, uh, moving ahead, there should be few steps that they need to tackle, which includes ex uh, uh, relationship management with the hospitals who are going to be the main distribution channels for our client. Secondly, also looking at the adoption rate of the, uh, of the patients uh, uh, for this disease and use of the self-diagnostic meter. And third, I would also look more into what could be done on the on the on on the increasing of the market share and defining the pricing strategies for our self self diagnostic meter, and we can help you with this uh, uh, with this solutions. Do you have any questions for me? No, thanks. Do you have any questions? Uh, yeah, I have some questions, not related to the case study, however, but uh, more general. Sure, tell me. Uh, so as you mentioned, uh, with your uh, career experiences and you worked in, in different types of uh, industries, but what was the exciting project that you did and for which industry you did? Okay. I'll assume that I answer this question. Any other questions you have? Yeah, absolutely. And I understand. Uh, so my another question is more on the cultural side of the uh, of, of the business. So when you mm -hmm. work with different kind of clients and how, how do you think culture impact, cultural impact of that client is on the on the strategy, dri driving strategy, basically? Mm, that's so a very good culture. question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so of course, I think um, the culture of the client uh, needs to be taken into consideration. In fact, uh, even before we start a consulting project, uh, a lot of uh, time is spent to brief the team about uh, about the culture and the cultural connotations of that. Right from the staffing, uh, first of all, we ensure that the consultants who are staff, which are culturally aligned, plus then there is a briefing that happens in terms of uh, what all the client cultural norms are, right from the perspective of language, um, the the kind of uh, uh, you know etiquettes that they have right till the the clothing and etc. I mean I have had a uh, consulting project when uh, we were encouraged to wear jeans and t-shirt and not uh, not wear suit yeah. <clears throat> because uh, suit can be just intimidating in some cultures. Yeah. So yeah, all these things are um, already taken care of uh, right from that point till literally the communication of your recommendations yeah so we always talk about speaking top down 
but of course in there are there are certain sensitivities <clears throat> that you should be taking into consideration depending on the client culture client state of mind uh, etc so all these things are done uh, because it's it's a human um, industry we are we are working with people so we have to ensure that we customize our delivery okay great thank Good. you so much for this yeah. thanks for the question pritam and uh, yep yeah, all the best thank you thank you so much yep yeah. all right cool yeah uh pritam how are you doing i just wanted to sip a glass of water but yeah i'm doing great i'm doing great uh, i mean interviewer was uh, very friendly this time i think so uh, yeah i tried to i i i mean i at some parts i i must on the calculations because of uh, yeah the the arrangements that i have did here however uh, on the other parts i believe i had it good yeah my congratulations uh well done uh cool um what did you like about your performance particularly uh personally i would say uh, more on the fit part uh, which i am practicing since one month now so i believe on the fit part i um, uh, i i tried to convince the interviewer why i am a good fit and why what kind of problems challenges that i have Uh, did uh, and and could be useful. Those skills could be useful at BCG. On the case side, uh, more about thinking more or uh, like uh, different ways. Uh, let's say on that part of criticality of diabetes, how we can access the penetration rate. So on these two points, I believe I did very good. Great, uh, cool. By the way, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you please write uh, into the chats uh, what kind of feedback do you have? Like, what have you, what did you like about Freedom's performance, or what would you criticize, and what would you suggest him to improve? I think this would be also very important for Freedom to learn, especially in front of his upcoming interviews. Yeah. So, uh, cool, Pritam. And what would you like to improve moving forward? Yeah. So mostly, um, I would say keeping your nerve during the interview process. Entire uh, uh, keeping the nerve during the process, and uh, uh, still thinking more on the structure. How we can make it uh, exhaustive, completely exhaustive. so i think i have missed one part which uh, was gavro was probing more on about what would be the other factors and uh, that simply i did not have it in my structure so my my structure was not mc or it was mutually exclusive but not completely exhaustive mhm mm yeah okay anything else a part of it uh, uh, i would also uh, would practice more cases and and more fit part to be honest so if i have proving on those parts i i have my answers ready so which i think i need to improve on okay do you guys have any feedback uh, to pridam can you please write it into the chats uh, and pridam would you like to hear uh, the feedback from others yeah sure Where should I start? Yeah. I mean, so the feedback from your good friend uh, Mark Terus is uh, great job, Freedom. Uh, if I was the interviewer, I would make you pass to the next round. Okay, uh, so this much, is yeah. already a, a pretty bold statement. Um, Abdul Rahman, uh, fit part was great, and you can improve math. Uh, Ashwin Kumar mentioned great job. um i would have taken a little more time for structuring your case i believe you took less than 90 seconds and gaurav sakharan mentioned that agree that the answers to the feed questions were top down and well structured then um ishtiak uh, mavla mentioning that freedom can improve on driving the case more yeah this is also very good uh, azamat uh, amzabek cannibalization is one of the most important factors which was not mentioned by freedom uh, mansi well structured answers uh, mark really i think the structure was great 
Cool. And Fernando uh, on the fit, good content, need to be more concise and de roboticize. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the four, three reasons, uh, if it comes up uh, too, too much, sounds a bit unnatural to me. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, Nishant, great work. Uh, NP, you did great, Freedom. And uh, Julia uh, Osterak, uh, reliability of those tests are important. Do they require clinical testing to confirm the diabetes stuff? Okay, this is probably a question. Uh, Ishvarya, uh, good work, Freedom. Great structure and very confidentially put. Mark Taruk, uh, okay, so now the more comprehensive feedback from Mark. First, show more enthusiasm while speaking, more energy, don't be monotonous, increase mm -hmm. the speed, decrease the speed, increase the tone volume, and then decrease the tone volume. All right, so it's more about uh, the intonation. Second, great answers, great communication skills, very polite. Yeah, Freedom, you really improved over the last uh, three months uh, in that extent. Yeah, then uh, third one, when you wish presenting your framework, ask him if he's fine with the structure or what he thinks about it. Julia uh, mentioned great structured answers, uh, never gave it in winning the medal. And Emmett, it was very well uh, orchestrated improvement uh, answers were a bit lengthy initially. And Mansi, he forgot to discuss on the impact of, uh, of this new product uh, on the previous business model and how uh, this will affect the possibility uh, of the product. So this is the feedback uh, which you receive from the audience. Freedom, is it helpful for you? Is it bringing yeah, you absolutely. further? Yeah, absolutely. Some of the points are really good. Uh, about the length of the answers or voice modulations yeah that is that's very important on the case side yes as well some of the things really on the math side i generally do good on math side but this is not about the math guys <laughs> this is about the situation so everything even most of the uh, people will will fail in math uh, if they are under situ certain stressful situations so it is more about the situation, I believe, but yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Brina, would you like to get some feedback from Gaurav? Absolutely, yes, I'm waiting for that. Yeah. So Gaurav, <coughs> top down. Good, Pritam. Yes, um, I think if this would have been a real uh, BCG interview, I would have had a tough time to uh, say yes or no. In some cases, it would have gone positive. Uh, in some cases, it would have gone negative. Um, very difficult <clears throat> to say. Uh, but let's, uh, as our philosophy, uh, let's prepare for the worst and hope for the best. So let's say you could have got rejected. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> why is that? Uh, because a <clears throat> couple of, uh, I think, two, three mistakes in the cases. One is um, completely forgot the cannibalization part major aspect. Uh, the company is already in this business and providing this to hospitals and uh, the new product in the same, uh, same, same business, you have to consider cannibalization. You completely missed out on that. Secondly, you did talk about uh, uh, the whether it's going to be prescription or not, but you didn't ask for anything related to patent. Yeah, so you don't know whether in future this particular new product is protected or not. Okay. And uh, yeah, thirdly, uh, the math mistake uh, that ultimately, um, though it's zero, but uh, it does count as a mistake. Yeah. So uh, three mistakes uh, in one case. Uh, as I said, it can go either ways, <clears throat> but just uh, I'm being tough on you so that you will be tougher uh, for the real one. Um, and I would say I wouldn't uh, take you forward. But a fantastic uh, fit. The content was very, very nice. And uh, um, I just, some of the answers like, uh, why should uh, why should we hire you? Why BCG? I think these were model answers. I think if uh, 
those who are observing the uh, uh, today's webinar i think they should take a notice of how customized and specific the answers were yeah uh, the content i think uh, you spoke about the bcg's report you spoke about you know specifically in your career what all things you want to you know kind of take it forward and because of that you should be hired all these uh, fit questions were like perfect yes of course intonation can be improved it also is about personality so uh, uh, till you can please push it to to uh, bring that liveliness um, and intonation yeah uh, but otherwise i don't have any major complaints on on fit i think it was fantastically done uh, i think the major part is uh, the mistakes were in case only okay yeah thank you thank you so much Gaurav. it's a very thank close you. call very close shape yeah uh, on my good mm -hmm. days i will i will take this candidate forward on my bad days i will not <laughs> yeah i mean i i deliberately uh, did not talk about cannibalization cannibalization so strategic alignment because i thought they are not doing anything for diabetes so that is my assumption that i made which is wrong i think i i think even i asked you do they have any similar experience in this you mentioned there is no experience so i thought okay, no, no, no. they don't they are the, they they are giving the diabetes service to the hospitals yeah, right exactly so i missed on that point otherwise cannibalize sensation you know i always yeah, have yeah. that in my bucket yeah. i mean I, i was surprised how you missed it but it's okay i yeah, think cool. uh, there's a lesson to be learned absolutely yeah yeah uh, so there were also a couple of questions uh, so thank you very much uh, for having this uh, great case interview simulation uh, guys can you maybe also please write down into the chat whether this was helpful for you uh, this case simulation and uh, whether you were solving the case together with us and uh, yeah uh, gaurav and uh, pridam there are also a couple of more questions which i will be now addressing to you as we are moving from the feedback to our q and a session so uh, there was the question about the cannibalization about the microeconomic and microeconomic factors as well as about competition and uh, coming out with a meter that is cheaper in the market maybe you could uh, simply describe us what was the logic how to solve uh this case and uh what are the do's and don'ts in this specific case see i think uh majority path that uh pritham has taken is a correct path so there's nothing i wouldn't have gone anywhere else okay yes macroeconomic factors are important but again from an 80 20 perspective i'm okay if i if you keep them out <coughs> for sure yeah uh, cheaper um, meter coming up yes exactly this is where the 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 patenting part uh, was a miss out yeah because uh, i also told him in the in in between that you know uh, basically what we are talking about is uh, assume that there is no other meter yeah so it's a it was a new product so he should have addressed that whether this is patented or not because uh, in the in this data it says that it is patented and that's why there is no question of uh, discussing whether there will be a cheaper meter you know in one year's time or two me two years time okay that's why we we did not go there cannibalization i think we already now it's beaten this point to the death it was important there is no doubt about it Okay, sounds good. Cool. Um, then there are also a couple of more questions. So Fernando um, asks, uh, "What if failure? Uh, and how about the company's reputation? Are there any exit barriers of this business if it turns out to be not profitable?" Yeah, those things you can you can put if you want in the risk part. Okay, then there another question from uh, Ashwin Kumar: uh, Marketing expenses like hire, uh, hiring additional sales staff uh, to promote products to hospitals, physicians, clinics, uh, etc. Uh, then the shelf space at pharmacies and negotiating contracts. Uh, questions to the consultant masters team: How do you, if the case prompt uh, is an interviewer lad or a candidate lad? 
uh, how do you do probably? Like, what is the difference? Or so all these points are all all these points are okay, but yeah, I mean this is something that I only killed those yeah because don't forget that interviewer has only forty minutes to evaluate a candidate. And um, by saying that you know twenty five pounds is the price and twenty pounds is all cost included, uh, I just wrapped it up. Yeah, if the case had a focus on costs, I would have spent ten minutes on that. And in that case, all these costs uh, we would have discussed. Okay, and yes, yeah, so this was uh, uh, in, in this was a BCG case, so a candidate led case, you can say. Uh, yeah. Only thing is, I think I asked him a question at the end, uh, but otherwise, I think um, it was a candidate-led case. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Cool, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Do you have any further questions? Uh, if you want, you can raise your hands uh, and speak out, or uh, turn on your cameras and microphones and speak, or you can also put your questions into the chat. So, um, anything which still remained unclear for you. And there is a question from Serena Fioni. Uh, what differentiates BCG from the other MBP firms? Is it more a matter of a culture or different industries practices in which they are active? I should be answering this. Yeah. What differentiate BCG with other firms? Okay, so I mean, I don't from know. Other from other MBB firms, like from McKinsey or Bain. Oh, man, that's a tough question. So I think uh, very Bain, I think, is tad smaller. So though they call it MBB, but Bain is much smaller than the other two. Uh, and McKinsey and BCG both have a very uh, from a breadth perspective, they are they are the very big and cover most of the industry sectors, uh, functions, and uh, geographies. So very similar. Uh, the only difference that I see in McKinsey and BCG is is like its culture. Uh, McKinsey is very cutthroat culture and very very structured environment, and hence uh, the the rigor of problem solving and the discipline uh, that is expected is much higher. Uh, whereas BCG is much, uh, uh, I mean, known for, uh, what can I say, uh, a much open mindset uh, where you can, you know, you can, um, you can do a lot of creative thinking. So much more creative in their solutioning. Um, and uh, and the, the culture is a little bit more lenient than in McKinsey. Right, sounds good. And guys, um, remember all these are um, partnership I, firms. Yeah, so in every geography, you have to be really be at an office level to compare them because it's it's more it's better to compare like McKinsey Paris office versus BCG Paris office than saying McKinsey or versus BCG because every office has a has a culture, uh, and so you have to if you when you are applying for the these companies go a little bit more detailed yeah don't be at a complete at a firm level especially in these mbbs where uh, uh, you know where they will scrutinize and they will you know find shoot down your generic answers i will only add flow from my uh, personal experience since i have uh, quite a lot of friends uh, both in mckinsey and bcg um, I will, for me personally, it's also the way how, uh, how these companies work uh, together. So if McKinsey actually tries to come to the top level and push everything top down, so basically the shit co always comes from the top and uh, they are simply ensuring the buy-in from the managing board and don't really care about the buy-in uh, in the middle management. The BCG um, uh, uses quite an opposite approach. So they're trying to be more collaborative with the client to create a more long lasting impact and uh, ensuring also the buy-in within the organization so that the change can really happen. And uh, what uh, BCG also uh, claims a lot 
is, is about creativity skills. So they value creativity really a lot and therefore um, please use this also whenever you're gonna speak to BCG, um, especially in the answer like, why do you want to join BCG? So this could be one of your three reasons. Mainly. Hope it asks uh, your question. It answers your question. Then another question is coming from Fernando. So the prompt was very wide. Uh, is there a number of clarifying questions uh, that is accepted for these kind of cases? I didn't get the question. So there was a pretty long prompt and Fernando is asking like whether there are any uh, number of clarifying questions which you can ask, like two, three, four, five. <laughs> so it, it has nothing to do with the length of the prompt. So you just need to follow the clarification question framework, Fernando, that's it. And yeah, normally it's around okay. questions. Yeah. Yeah, if I may jump to to clarify my question, my my question to you is that yes, the the, the, the prompt was was clear, but there was a lot of information to provide context. Like, like I don't know, um, national health service in the UK. This came across during the case as does it take care of all the population? Does it not? Is it that too detailed? Is there a moment in which the consultant said, okay, you're asking a good question, but come on, I need to get going into the case. Do you understand what I'm asking? Yeah, yeah I got your point. So see, I think mm -hmm. you, should, Fernando, you should- This is uh, not the long prompt. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, this, is, this was not the long prompt. There are longer prompts uh, in the case. However, uh, what you're saying is right. And uh, what I would just say is that when you are thinking about whether to ask this question or not, ask yourself whether this question's answer will give you anything from the perspective of uh, uh, the case structure, or this can hold till the time of analysis. I think there's someone called Yasin who is unmuted, and I'm able to see a road in some country. I don't know which country. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Yasin. So, uh, uh, yeah. So the point is. Uh, the one thing is the framework that we have product market and uh, success criteria but another thing is we are self asking you know uh, this is a clarification phase and uh, the rapport is not yet built with the client yeah is this question really necessary at this stage or it can wait till the analysis that's the question that you should be asking yourself yeah otherwise no it will become an interrogation <laughs> and then as you rightly okay. pointed out uh, the interviewer might say that, ah, okay, it's probably a good question, but now I need to get going. All those things will start playing in the interviewer's mind then. Thanks. Right, cool. Then there is another question from um, Rakhav Pensal. Should we have a uh, go-to-market strategy in this framework, um, like joint venture, acquisition, or organic growth? No, not required. It was yes or no. Okay, all right. Cool. Do we have any further questions in the chat or would you like to prefer to go to the bonus materials and receive the gifts from our team? All right. Seems like uh, there are no further questions. So uh, uh, then let's basically go to the next uh, chapter where we would like to share some bonus materials with you. And yeah, um, Belina, what do you have tonight for our guests? <laughs> I have plenty of stuff, uh, but first of all, uh, I would ask all of you to fill in the satisfaction survey, webinar satisfaction survey. The link to it will be sent uh, to the chat uh, right now. Uh, it is very important for us to collect your opinion, to see what you think, to understand what you like uh, and uh, what you want to be improved. So please do it. Uh, and yeah, the next webinars will be better for you. Um, 
And yeah, so for all of you who stayed this long with us, who stayed with us till the very end, uh, we have some goodies. The first one is the brief presentation of the webinar. The second one is the video recording of the webinar. So if you did not understand something or you want to revise something or you want to rewatch it or whatever it is, you can, uh, so you will be able to do that. And also you got the link uh, to the Calendly, so where you can book your first free uh, consultations uh, with our client managers and uh, to see what your uh, next steps to the, uh, so into the consulting should be. Um, yeah, and uh, all of you, I invite to our next uh, webinar, free webinar, uh, which will be uh, also on BCG and Bain, but this time on final round. Uh, so it will take place on 26th of May. Uh, the time is usual uh, from 5 to uh, 7 CET. So please join us uh, and we will crack another case together. And also feel free Excuse to uh, follow us on our social media. So there you can find uh, a lot of information um, about us and about consulting in general. So uh, if you are interested, just uh, click the buttons and yeah, follow us there. Uh, whatever it is, whatever platform you prefer. Uh, and yeah, well, uh, this is all from my side for today, I guess. I wish all of you a very nice evening, morning, night, or day, whatever it is, and hope to see all of you next time.